Now, what are the payoffs uh, to a forward or a futures position? Remember, the uh, sort of settings in which the two are traded are different, but as far as the contracts themselves, uh, both essentially are the same sort of commitment to buy or sell a certain asset at a certain time uh, for a certain price. So the profit diagram for a forward or a futures position uh, should actually look about the same. And so it does. You can see that as the price of the underlying asset rises, the profit to a long position in a forward or futures um, actually rises. And that may give you pause for just a second when you think, hey, wait, a long position commits me to buy. Uh, why am I profiting as what I'm buying becomes more expensive? Um, but hopefully that momentary confusion passes once you remember that uh, your price at which you're buying is actually locked in. That's the uh, future or forward price that you agreed initially. And your payoff or profit for a long position is actually the value of the thing you are receiving. In other words, we can say it's the future price at the end, at maturity, at, let's call it time t. Remember, we know that at maturity, the futures price should converge to the spot price. So we could also put the spot price here at maturity, as t. That is what we receive once we have bought the asset. Um, and what do we pay for it? Well, we pay the futures price or forward price that we agreed back at the initial period. Let's call it time one. So indeed, you can see that as the price of the underlying at maturity, which is the spot price, as that rises, that means that the future price at maturity also rises, which means that the payoff to the long position also rises. And analogously, of course, if the price falls, uh, then the futures price at maturity falls, and therefore the profit uh, to the long position falls as well. Uh, because remember, you're receiving that underlying asset, and the spot market tells you what it's worth right now. If its price in the spot market rises, that's good for you, because you're receiving something more valuable at a price that you've already previously agreed uh, which won't change that futures price at the beginning. If, on the other hand, the spot market tells you this asset is now less valuable, um, its price has actually fallen, well, that means that the profit to you from this futures contract or forward contract is now lower or perhaps negative. Now, what about a short position? Well, if we know the long, we should now know uh, what the analogous argument for the short would be. Uh, of course, then the short position should fall in profits as the price of the underlying asset rises. Let's just remind ourselves what the profit to a short futures or forward position is. What do we do? We receive the pre-agreed price at the very beginning, the uh, initial futures price at which we agreed this contract. And what do we give up? Well, we give up the futures price at maturity, which by that idea of convergence is also the same thing as the spot price at maturity. So you can clearly see that as the price of the underlying asset at maturity in the spot market rises, so does the future price of the underlying asset at maturity. And therefore, the price or sorry, the profit to the short position falls. And analogously, if the price of the underlying asset were to fall at maturity, that means that the futures price at maturity would fall, which means that the profit to the short position would actually rise. So of course, the two are mirror opposites of each other. And um, as you by now I uh, have heard many times derivatives being a zero-sum game, it must be that the profit to the short side and the profit to the long side are mirror images. The loss to one is a gain to another. Uh, that said, though, let's recap the differences between forward contracts and futures contracts.
Um, remember, forwards are uh, bilateral contracts between two parties. Um, they can still be, of course, and are now increasingly more uh, routed through some central counterparty, but they're effectively still over-the-counter um, contracts struck between, uh, between two parties, whereas futures are exchange-traded. Um, everything is routed through the same exchange. Uh, there is no bilateralism in a futures contract. Um, the flip side of sort of the bilateral ad hoc nature of the forward contract is it can, it can be a non-standard contract. It can have unusual uh, pricing restrictions. It can be on unusual quantities or types of underlying assets, um, unusual times to maturity. Really anything that two parties are willing to agree to uh, can be uh, parameterized as a forward whereas a futures is a standard contract, they have standard expirations, standard quantities, standard uh, pricing rules by, let's say, different grades of underlying asset, um, much less room for customization, but of course in exchange, uh, much greater liquidity uh, because there's more uh, market participants who would like to trade a standardized contract. Since forwards are Customized, they usually have one specified delivery date that both sides agree to, whereas futures being standardized uh, to try to make them maximally flexible within standardized constraints, uh, they have a range of delivery dates. Uh, forwards are settled at the end of the contract, so they aren't marked to market the way that futures are. Uh, there is no ebb and flow in the margin account. Um, there may, of course, be collateral, um, but it's not... Uh, settled at the daily frequency as it is with futures, where this margin, which of course is essentially the collateral, um, is updated based on that uh, settlement price at the end of each day. Uh, with forwards, delivery um, or a final cash settlement usually occurs, whereas futures are usually closed uh, prior to maturity. In other words, uh, since futures are so standardized, there's less reason for market participants uh, to really want delivery of the standardized commodity um, unless they actually happen to be using it as part of their production process. And of course, sort of the uh, issue with forwards, well, the reason why they are being sort of brought to a more centralized uh, trading environment similar to futures is that while they are bilateral agreements, um, even if there is some collateral but there is a daily settlement, uh, there is some credit risk uh, because if the counterparty defaults, you may be able to keep whatever collateral they gave you, but it may not be enough to cover uh, your actual position or the gains you would have made had they not defaulted. Whereas with futures, because they are routed through an exchange, uh, because there are so many market participants providing margin, um, there's virtually no credit risk, even if a single counterparty in the exchange defaults. Uh, they can potentially be one of very, very many other counterparties, um, and on the whole, the exchange will still keep functioning. And finally, to wrap up our discussion of futures and forwards um, with perhaps the most confusing type of futures contracts, contracts on exchange rates. Um, for futures, exchange rates are quoted as the number of dollars per the unit of foreign currency, uh, full stop. You know, dollars per pound, dollars per yen, dollars per Canadian dollar. Um, that's all very sort of logical and uniform. Uh, forwards, on the other hand, are actually quoted in the same way as spot exchange rates. And spot exchange rates are quoted um, dollars per unit of foreign currency for the pound, the euro, the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar. But on the other hand, for the Canadian dollar and the Japanese yen, uh, for example, those are quoted as foreign currency per US dollar. So, uh, that's just one of sort of the many 
confusing aspects of foreign exchange, uh, simply the way that the price um, is quoted. Uh, but that's just something that must be remembered. For futures, it's always dollar per unit of foreign currency. Uh, for forwards, it's however the spot exchange rate would be quoted. Sometimes dollar per unit of foreign currency, sometimes foreign currency per dollar. Thanks for listening.